Okay, welcome everybody. Um, review this time is on Carpe Diem 2, um, which is a 150 foot Trinity. Um, a little bit older this time than the previous Trinities we've reviewed. She's 2002, but she did go through a pretty extensive refit um, over a two year period. So, um, great boat, very up to date, um, beautiful interiors. Just run through some of the specifications here. Um, 150 foot length, like I said, 28 foot beam. That's fairly standard with the, the Trinities and, and seven and a half foot draft. Um, there again, um, semi displacement hull, aluminium superstructure, and hull. Don't have to worry about any corrosion issues between um, the hull and the superstructure. So, both aluminium sometimes with um, steel hulls and, and aluminium superstructures, uh, there can be issues there if they're not welded correctly. Um, it's ABS uh, classification, that's great for help you out with charters and like I've said before your insurance rates. Um, MCA compliant, she um, complies with all of the uh, rules and regulations set out by the uh, marine industries. Um, there are Caterpillar 35 series engines again, very reliable, very easy to work on. Take them anywhere you want and, and find a technician that uh, that is licensed by Caterpillar. Uh, cruising speeds and, and maximum speeds, fairly standard. Five staterooms um, and asking price here is um, a very competitive, uh, $15.5 million. Now moving into the photographs, um, we start off with the main salon here. Um, as I've explained in the past, the, there's a, a, a option here in the interior layout um, for either a formal dining room or more of an open plan layout. This boat has the, the formal dining room layout. Um, although dividing the two is only cabinetry, it's something that can be changed um, and in fact has been done on, on another boat, one that... Um, really stands out for me is cocktails um, basically exactly the same boat it's a couple of years newer um, but it had the same salon and, and formal dining room uh, I was actually the project manager for that entire refit period and, and oversaw all the work there and and they basically gutted that that uh, entire space and opened it out into a, a, a very nice open plan feel so as I said before it's um, personal choice some people um, require a formal dining room other people um, like to have that space open um, either way at this price um, you can you can get that refitted um, um, like I said at that, at that price is, is very competitive and, and to change that is not a, is not a major a major um, task. Now moving on to these other photographs here, uh, like I said in the in the roundup, all the exterior marble is new. You can see on the top left corner there, that's the shot of the bridge deck aft dining. Um, that table's new. They've got countertops to port and starboard as well that are also new. Um, and here they've they've used that back edge, the back profile of this deck, um, pretty pretty well they've, they've got uh, seating that goes all the way around the back there and and in fact you can just see either side of the table at, at the back there they have some some coffee tables which actually um, raise up and down so you can adjust the height there um, the photograph below that is the the sky lounge um, during the during the refit on this boat um, they had all of the interior um, lightened up the the traditional feel of these of these trinities is is pretty heavy uh, mahogany woods dark woods um, so what they did they added um, a lot of cream leather panels um, different types of window treatments um, art you can actually see some of those leather cream panels the inserts that they've put on the bottom right there in the master cabin where those um, sconce lights or wall lights are 
So they've really lightened it, lightened it up here, modernized the the feel of the of the boat. Um, it's it's sort of a, I've said this in the in the roundup. It's almost a a New York penthouse apartment feel to to this boat when you walk around. It's um, it has a, a very nice feel. So the master bathroom there, top left, and then moving on to the some of the guest cabins now um, it's a, a unique setup that, that they have down here and this is one of their um, refitted items here you can see on the top right um, this is the guest uh, suite now the reason that they do this is uh, during charters a lot of the time the charter party will have two principal guests so two sort of head honchos if you like that, that have chartered the boat and then when you get on the boat you always have that discussion well who gets the master cabin um, seeing as there's there's only one on on this sort of size boat now the way they've got around that here is they have changed the twin cabin which sits next to one of the one of the king guest cabins and they've made that into a, a lounge area and you can see the doors there. This is the, the top right photograph that I'm talking about here. Um, the doors there sort of lead through to one or the other. So it really turns it into a suite. Um, if that isn't needed, then you can close those doors and what looks like sofas there on the on the right, they can still be used as single beds. So if you've got kids, it's, this room is great for a family. Um, with kids, you can put the kids on one side and, and mum and dad can be on the other. So we'll see that on the GA or the, the general arrangement plan a little bit later on in the in the review. Um, so there's three king beds and then this one suite, which is a king bed with the with the suite off to, uh, off to one side. Moving on again, um, it, this is one of the only Trinity's um, that has sort of a, a country kitchen layout um, with the with the galley. This in the the top left here, um, and it's really works very well. Speaking with the the chef and and the crew, um, they say that ninety percent of the time the guests are in here, um, sort of nibbling as they as the chef cooks and 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 talking. It's the same as a house. Everyone knows the center of center of the house is the kitchen um, so that's what they've sort of played on here a very nice feature um, the other two top right bottom left that's the pilot house and then you can see on the bottom right there is the um, the sun beds and, and the jacuzzi what's nice about this um, sun deck is the jacuzzi is pulled very slightly further aft than we've seen on on other boats um, and you can you can almost see it there on the um, bottom left hand photograph because the jacuzzi is slightly back f away from the the windscreen at the, at the top it means you get a, a greater sun bathing area and that was a, a one of the objects that have been refitted over the life of the the boat you can see over to the right here on the GA on the far left hand shot of the of the sun deck you can see there how it was originally laid out they just had small seating around the around the front edge of the front leading edge of the jacuzzi so all that's been turned into into uh, sun pads now and, and you can see it there so a lot of um, space for for sunbathing around this jacuzzi it works well um, moving further back on the sun deck, you can see we have the similar crane set up to Angelis, where they have the crane in the middle. Um, I pointed out the the differences there with having the crane in the middle to, as opposed to having the crane off to one side. Um, I'll run over it real briefly now. Basically, what this means is when all the toys are off that deck and in the water you still have the crane in the middle of the deck. So it kind of restricts the usage of that area very slightly. Um, I mentioned earlier the boat cocktails. That's originally how they 
had their Sundex set up, we moved that crane, um, purchased a, a low profile crane and put it alongside the, the bulwarks where you see the, the tender there um, so that when all the toys are off you have full usage of that of that large space back there. So if this um, area back here isn't something that you're, you're is really going to interfere with your usage of the boat then it's really not a, um, a consideration and even if it is you still have the the option for lifting the crane out of the way but it's just something that, that some people um, appreciate that being pointed out um, it's not a uh, it's not a, a huge job again to refit that and, and move it over to the other side so when you when you take into account the asking price of, of the boat it's um, it's maybe something that you can uh, that you can refit it in the future um, on the opposite side of the of the GA I just want to point out that suite um, that we saw the photographs with uh, earlier on in, in the brochure there you can see um, how that that layout was originally separate and then they've just taken down that dividing wall turned that into uh, doors and then altered the the bed layout on the on the twin side so that it almost looks like uh, sofas and, um, and a little lounge area there so great use of space um, we'll move on to the the general descriptions here actually before I move on there's a, a great shot uh, again on the GA of the formal dining room. So you can see if you took down the the three walls there and just left the AV uh, unit, you can actually open that space right up from the back doors through to the um, main stairwell there. Um, here I I won't dwindle on, on this too long. If, if you like the, the full brochure then then shoot us an email, click on the request more info button and, and I'll email this this uh, PDF off to you. Um, it was the, the actual interior designer was, was someone that's um, uh, a renowned designer, it's Carlos Williamson, uh, sorry Carol Williamson. Um, you will have seen her work on, on other yachts within uh, within the industry. Um, so there, they just they just describe some of the the different rooms. Moving on, um, this gives you a, a, a brief overview of what was done during the the refit period. You can see the added zero speed stabilizers. That uh, is is probably the the biggest and and the best thing that that they did during that that refit. Apart from obviously changing the the feel of the interior, but that will have a huge impact on the chargeability of the of the boat, um, and she's also had a, a very nice new paint job. Um, now you can't really see it from the photographs. Maybe if you look uh, closely at the, one of the profile shots, the whole color is a slightly different tone of white to the superstructure in the house. Um, it's it actually works very well. It it gives the boat quite a an elegant look so the hull is slightly off-white um, not quite cream uh, whereas the the superstructure is a bit more of a, a pure white uh, the machinery there's our, our caterpillars great engines um, the generators they will um, invariably be John Deere engines that the Northern Light uses uh, other equipment here we have our water makers and, and headhunter system the standard, um, the standard package on on most of these these boats. Um, AV equipment. The um, the one thing that I, I don't see here is is Collide Escapes uh, listed. With it being a, an older boat, that's something that would have had to have been added at some point during the life of the boat. That I mean, they have uh, DVD players and and such but I don't see that they have um, that they have collide escapes here which is the the mass storage um, device that, that I've explained previously so something to bear in mind 
and again it's not it's not a, a huge expense to to add that at some point um, she does have VSAP though I will point that out even though it's um, it is a, an older boat she, it is uh, listed there that she has um, she has visa um, and there we go last they'll list the the safety equipment um, and then the exclusions there is just the, the R work fairly uh, fairly standard in these um, in the purchase agreements. So there you go, Carpe Diem 2, very nicely refitted and a great asking price.